Welcome to this video on WebSphere MQ clusters. This video will describe the purpose of clustering, demonstrate how easy it is to create a WebSphere MQ cluster key manager, show it using the WebSphere MQ Explorer, and also demonstrate some of the benefits of workload balancing. The key reasons why you'd want to use a WebSphere MQ cluster are simplified administration, workload balancing, and flexible connectivity. If we first look at simplified administration, in a large WebSphere MQ network, the administration burden is high when you wish to connect many key managers to many other key managers. This is because each key manager requires several transmission queues, remote queue definitions, and channels to the other key managers in the network. Using MQ clustering allows you to reduce this administration burden because MQ clustering will auto-define some of the objects for you. A very powerful feature of MQ clusters is workload balancing. This is a very powerful feature, allowing you to route messages around failures and also to route messages to specific systems based on several tailorable parameters. Finally, flexible connectivity. By using a simplified administration and workload balancing, we can route messages through complex networks in a very flexible manner. Before we demonstrate how to create a custom key manager and show workload balancing in action, we'll first describe the customer use fees demonstrations. The first thing to note in this diagram is the full repository, Queue Manager 3. This holds the repository that contains all of the objects used in the cluster. These are all of the cluster channels and all of the cluster keys. The other queue managers in the cluster are partial repositories. This means they only hold a subset of all of the cluster objects. The queues that we'll send messages to will be defined on queue manager 2, 3, and 4 and we will workload balance for work and messages from Queue Manager 1 to the queues in the demonstration. We'll demonstrate how easy it is to create a cluster queue manager by creating one of the partial repositories by using the IBM WebSphere MQ Explorer. To create a cluster queue manager in this instance, the partial repository on Queue Manager 2, we simply define two channels. First, a cluster receiver channel. This is going to be inbound into Queue Manager 2. We must specify a connection name to enable other Queue Managers to alter and find channels into this key manager. And we must share this channel in the demo cluster. The other channel we must define is a cluster sender channel, and this must be directed at the full repository which is Queue Manager 3 in this demo. We specify the con name of Queue Manager 3 and share this channel in the demo cluster. That's how simple it is to create a WebSphere MQ cluster manager. Now we'll show how to use Support Pack MDOA to demonstrate the workload balancing abilities of MQ clusters. This support pack is sending messages from Queue Manager 1 to the cluster queue defined on Queue Managers 2, 3, and 4. The bar on the right shows that we have an equal distribution between all three queue managers and their queues. By changing the attributes of the cluster queues or the cluster channels, we can alter this distribution. But one of the most powerful features is that if one of the queue managers goes down, MQ clustering will route the messages to the most available cluster queue managers. We can simulate a queue manager failure by stopping a channel. We'll use the MQ Explorer to stop the channel to queue manager 4. We can now see that without any other changes, all of the messages are now going to queue managers 2 and 3. So without any other manual intervention, we've now satisfied all of our messages. 
There are no messages building up on transmit queues to the unavailable queue manager. If we start this channel again, MQ clustering will automatically start sending messages to the available queue manager again. This shows one of the powerful features of WebSphere MQ workload balancing. If you'd like more information on WebSphere MQ clustering, or if you're interested in any of the WebSphere MQ support packs, including MDOA, which was used in this demonstration, please use these links.